Okay, hi everybody. This is Matt Stevens and Aline, United Arab Emirates, and we're uh, we have a learning together session tonight uh, with Rita Zeinsteer, a very good friend of mine and of ours, and um, she's going to talk to us about how to maximize collaboration and sharing with Google Plus. So she's going to give us an overview of Google Plus, and uh, I believe it's uh, a presentation that she's trying to perfect, and so she's graciously sharing it with us to uh, help her to do that. And I should mention, today is the 24th of August, 2014. And without further ado, Rita, welcome. Uh, you can introduce yourself, and uh, it's so nice to see you. And by the way, I'm going to switch off my video, because it might drag down the sound, but I encourage you to put yours on. Or actually, the videos actually probably won't matter, because they're just a little thumbnail. So. Um, you're welcome to start your video if you have one. And welcome. Well, thank you very much, Ma Vance. I'm not going to start my video. I think that this is much better like this, as it has always been. And uh, thank you very much for your kind words. It's my pleasure to be here, sharing this space with you and with all dear web heads and friends. In fact, it has been home, really. After 12 years of learning together and sharing not only information and knowledge, but also <laughs> friendship. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Google Plus and Hangouts. Um, I'm going to share some tips and tricks, and also to explain how many features um, provided by Google Plus can work to our advantage. First of all, um, I wanted to share this graph. Um, in which um, Guy Kawasaki, one of the chief evangelists of Apple, together with Dan Rome, came up uh, with this well, graphic where we can clearly and briefly see the differences between these four big exponents of social media. Twitter, as the champion of perceptions, where we share insights, impressions, and feelings. Facebook, as the social platform for connections and personal daily interaction. Pinterest, a visual discovery tool that people use to collect ideas for projects and interests. And Google Plus, described as passions. When people ask, what is Google Plus? There is this temptation of saying it is like Facebook or like Twitter. But once you get involved, it is not that similar to either. Yes, they all involve social and people and communication, and both of those other social networks can be great at doing what they do. But Google Plus is something different. It is bringing people together within the context of many of Google's services. It is quite simply something to be experienced for yourself. Um, I would say, summing all this up, that it's a, brush, a mush up between Facebook and Twitter with a more professional look, a more career-minded uh, objective, and more professionally oriented, whereas Facebook is focused more on more personal information and more social. Um, there are two main sides to Google+. The social side, which is made up of these posts that we make uh, whenever we want and which makes it so similar to Facebook or Twitter. The pages that we will be able to um, fill in with information, and the communities, which I'm going to describe later on, which are a possibility, again, of connecting with other people through uh, Google+. And then we have the Hangouts, right? Um, the Hangouts, which are by far and away the best thing about Google+. It's essentially a way to have a video conference with 10 of your friends. And um, the latest upgrade allows us to broadcast our Hangouts to as large an, an audience as we want. And um, with Hangouts on Air, we will be able to broadcast ourselves publicly to the entire world, see how many viewers we have, and even record and reshare our broadcast. The public recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and to our original Google Plus post. Now, according to Google, and this is a screenshot of uh, um, tip and trick 
for tips and tricks page which I came across. This and I really like it. That's why I in, uh, integrated it into the uh, PowerPoint. To begin, if you haven't got a Google Plus account yet, we should be exploring the site as if from the outside and um, trying to see what it is all about, putting up our profile, um, an attractive Im image of ourselves, and start linking um, profiles and pages and websites to our own website on Google+. And then finding people to whom we may relate. Remember that this is a social platform and that uh, the people who will be adding to our circles uh, will not be necessarily um, adding us ourselves unless they feel that what we post is interesting and looks appealing to them. So the idea is that uh, we try to put up things that will interest people but being really um, true to ourselves in the sense that we will be building up our own community in our own way. And then we can even add whole circles, uh, which means that all these circles, as in the case of, for example, an educational circle, I will be saying something else about circles which are meant to be like folders. And um, these circles, um, uh, there are many kinds of circles, and some educational circles might be appealing to us, might be providing information, excuse me, might be providing information um, which we find interesting. So it's important to explore these circles and maybe um, add them all to our own collection of circles. Um, this is, I'm sorry, sorry about this, my fault, my fault. Sorry, this is my fault, my mistake. I'm just trying to, trying interject. to interject. I think, I some, think someone, someone is not is using, using a headset, headset. So, you, so should you should mute your, your mic, mic if you're if not you're using a headset. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's better. No, no it's not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No? No? Sorry. Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> sorry, Vance, my mistake. I'm sorry about this. Um, what were you saying? I just missed that. Um, um, I'm, getting I'm getting an echo, echo and it might, it might be, from, be me. from me. Let me, just, let me just try this. Ah, there we go. Yes, it's from me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm messing with that. Uh, no problem. Uh, okay. So anyway, I just wanted to say that uh, since you took a short break there, that anybody is welcome to uh, come in and um, talk. I think you want this to be interactive. Is that correct? Yes, definitely, once. If you feel yeah. like you, you know, need to ask something or just ask something according to, well, what you, you know, you have gone through and your experience, you're all welcome, please. Yeah, and I'm sorry about that a moment ago. The iPad app, the mic on, mic off, kind of wasn't very clear, but anyway, I've got it off now. So, um, uh, it, there are three microphones available. Uh, when I'm talking, I'm going to mute my mic. Otherwise, I'm going to release the talk button so other people can pick up the mic if they want it. Okay, thanks. No, oh, thank you, Barnes. I'm sorry about this um, short break. I took. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I wanted to now show you a um, screenshot of my own profile page, which shows that you can make it, I mean, what you want to make it. There are different possibilities of. Um, enhancing your um, profile by adding different backgrounds and your something about your work, something about uh, what you want to say about yourself to uh, really um, get people's attention and uh, you know uh, make it nice. Any questions? No questions. Not clear. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I, have a, I have a question. Yep. Can you hear me? Me? Okay. Um, well, I I find it's interesting. It will be interesting to see what you tell us about Google Plus. But I find that it's 
that I have to figure it out. You know, it's kind of like a game or something. You know, that you have to start playing it before you can understand how it works. So um, that's what I'm finding out. You know, as I use circles and as I uh, add people to circles or communicate with my circles or you know set up hangouts, let's say that um, include other people, include circles or try to. Even oh, the Google communities, for example. I suppose you're coming to Google communities. Yeah. But how how they work to communicate, and once you set up an event, say that in, in the Hangout, how these parts go together uh, is uh, quite complicated. But anyway, it, that, that's I guess what I would interject is I would may, maybe want to know what you have found out at, from time to time. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vance. I yeah, and I agree with you that it's not that easy. Uh, the whole system is not that user friendly. And this is one of the reasons why I really, when you asked me and gave me the chance to do this in a Hangout or here on the Illuminate platform, our dear platform that we have shared for so long, I decided uh, to do it uh, in this environment first before we plunge into the experience ourselves together because this might give us a little bit more confidence on using the, uh, on behaving in the, in the new environment like a Hangout, which is not that user friendly. You need to get the, you know, to learn the ropes to be able to manage quite confidently, don't you? Well, you you have to have some experience in it. Uh, Mariana has just commented that Google Plus communities are better than Facebook groups, at least in her opinion, and I would agree that that is correct for certain things that you want to do. If you of want course. to communicate with your friends and find out what your kids are doing while they're out traveling, Facebook is probably best for that. So Facebook has certain affordances, and you learn these affordances as you use it. It's probably it's certainly not as complicated as Google Plus, uh, with all its affordances. It's so many affordances. So, yeah. So that's. Uh, but anyway, we learn by doing them, and I uh, don't. It, it's very hard, I think, to tell people how things work. But anyway, you're going to try. So <laughs> see what you have to say. Okay. Thank you very much, Barnes. And the please. Do come up whenever you feel like adding something or making something clearer, or Teresa or any any of the other webheads willing to say something. Everybody will be welcome. And um, yes, going back to the circle thing, uh, they are like folders, and you can name them the when the, the way you want. Some of them, as you can see, are in Spanish. Some others are in English, depending on what I feel. But no one within the circles will get to know where they are or how I have named the circles in which they are in, right? So this is a personal thing and nobody will be there. It's, this is just a, screen, a screenshot of my own page. But then you can add as many circles, that is, as many folders as you want. And uh, the important thing about circle is that, for example, this will allow students to create groups for collaborative projects. That is, or you yourself as a teacher, Maybe you can um, open a circle and put uh, a different group of students in each circle so that when you need to do project work or you need to send some invitations or some comments to uh, this specific group, you'll, everything will be easier because you just click on the circles and all the people will come up uh, at once and you will be able to send these comments to the whole group at a time. And students will be able to meet virtually to work on their project, share information, and provide feedback to each other. Any questions? No questions so far. OK. So the second Rita. page of Rita. Yes, yes Edithinia. Yes? Hello, Virginia. <laughs> Hello, Edithinia. Uh, well, I just <laughs> great to be here with you, Vance, and all others. Um, I was just saying in the text chat area that uh, I think that we should uh, have different platforms with more or less the same content because then people can choose whichever uh, platform they prefer and, uh, you know, just go there because, there are, you know, we can cater to different tastes this way, I believe. I agree. Definitely. Uh -huh. okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And I do find that this um, context, this environment that is provided by Google Plus is um, very different from others, as I said at the very beginning. And I like it much better than why I'm presenting on this. I wouldn't dream of presenting on Facebook. I'm sorry to say, but I know once that you like Facebook 
Facebook and in fact the whole world prefers uh, Facebook, but then I should be a freak anyway. Well anyway, um back to this second page which is, has been provided by Google to uh you know give out some tips and tricks. Uh this um is has to do with sharing and making comments. And again back to this idea of making comments, um, I think we should all be natural and personal in the way we provide them and also remembering that uh, they will be out for the world to read and uh, that these comments that we provide are the comments which might show like-minded people that we are there so that we can start enlarging our circles, our connections and our own knowledge. So. This is another option, the, uh, the, the, the one about joining communities. I'm going to show you some communities later on. And again, these communities have to do with education, and you can find the community that most appeals to you, depending on your likes, depending on your needs. And um, this will allow us to, of course, meet new people, because uh, as much as um, Seeing great, great new content, we'll, we'll be able to get in contact with other people and maybe exchange uh, ideas and uh, learn more from other people we have never met before. Um, and some people use Facebook for that. You say, Barnes, you, you, can you say something about that? Defending your Facebook, please. Ah, you feel that. Google Plus has many more affordances. Well, yeah, I would agree to that. And um, then uh, working in teams is nice, um, since this helps you connect with people on Google Plus. And there are some tips to avoid on things to avoid. That is, just like a party it says, just be social. Don't run around handing out your business cards. And I like this because it's important to bear in mind that um, people shouldn't be pushed, for example, to um, be followed or to be uh, to add to be I mean to add you in, in their circles. This should come out naturally as a consequence of your putting out what they really appreciate and find valuable. And then I came across. One site, which I'm not sure whether you are familiar with, which is called CircleCount.com. Do you know this CircleCount.com? Uh, circle it's great for seeing stats on engagement, who has added you into your circles, into their circles, and uh, much more. And so this is a screenshot again of CircleCount. Uh, the number of followers is a metric that measures the person's influence on Google+. The higher the number, the higher the person's influence, since more followers are likely to view this person's posts. Circle count is great to see stats on engagement. Who has added you into circles? Who's your top follower and more? And with circle count, you can add your Google Plus profile using the URL of your Google Plus profile or your custom Google Plus URL. And circle count will track the circles you are included in. One of the many features is your follower map. I'm going to show you one. This provides you with a nice heat map of where your followers are located. It also shows who has shared circles that include you, who is following you, and who is sharing your posts. This enables you to reach out to people that already like and share your content. And here you are. These are the things that you can do that you can do with circle count and out of uh, the 10 that you can see here, I find that there are some of them which are nice, such as, for example, the possibility of seeing and checking your followers' uh, history, or finding circles that you have been included in, or managing your favorite posts, or creating a world map with your followers. And you'll see one, I'm going to show you one. And also um, finding interesting people on Google Plus. This is the heat map. Uh, the heat map I was uh, talking about, and you'll see that many many circles have been put up, which show uh, where my followers are from. 
And the only thing that is necessary, uh, unfortunately, is that all the people are already uh, in circle count so that they show up. Uh, and this, well, it's not such a well-known uh, application that people have already shared. So this is why sometimes it's not as complete as we would like it to be. And here you see you have another map. And if you click, well, this is a screenshot, you can't do that. But if on the web you, you go to this map and you click on each plus symbol, you'll see the name of your followers and where they are from. So it's a nice feature and a nice thing to do if you feel like. Now, to be able to have access to a Hangout from your Google Plus page, you need a Google account. Any questions? Oh, thank you very much, Barnes. You've put up the, the URL. Any questions so far? No questions. Yeah, I was, I was just. Oh, I've done it with some. There we go. Uh, oh, 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 no, no I know what I'm doing. I'm listening on the uh, I'm listening on the iPad now. That's very confusing. Um, Circle Count requires, requires you to log in, in using um, Google Plus. I, I might want to just look it up before you know, just checking to make sure the legitimate um, output just to, before I hand over, over my credentials. See my credentials. But anyway, apart from that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, is it an echo? Okay. okay. Let, Let me just stop talking. No, come on. Come on, that's better. Bans, are you not going to say anything? Please, Bans. Oh, Don't yes, yes, yes. Um, is, has the echo gone away? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm just I'm listening on my iPad and talking on the uh, PC. So what's happening is that um, maybe I should just do them both on the same one. But um, I was getting an echo on my iPad when I was speaking. It was coming back to me. Um, I just said that I checked out a circle count. I went as far as putting my could, uh, where I would have to sign into Google, and I thought maybe I had better um, check it out. I'll, I'll do a search on it just to see what if there any is there any commentary about it. And um, yeah, let's see for for what I'm doing to raise us to know what I'm doing. I'm just uh, I'm on my PC, but I'm also looking at it should get the the video window up. There it is. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm also interacting on the iPad. I guess I'm, I'm doing that because I kind of like sometimes to go wander around, and um, it's just a little bit easier to carry this thing. And I also want to see how it works. Um, but anyhow, I'll, I'll do a search on Circle Count and see if there's any commentary on it to make sure it's a safe site. Yeah, because uh, since Google knows a lot about you, and my only my first impression is. Oh, hang on. Now circle count knows as well. So uh, I'll just check them out. Okay, but anyway, it looks like you, yeah. a very interesting site. As I just, yeah, it uh, does. It does. But anyway, seeing what it can do, right. yes, quite interesting. So thanks yeah. for telling us about that. Yeah. Welcome, Avance. Uh, so, okay, so I was saying that you need a Google account definitely to be able to uh, open your Google Plus page. And um, from there, you can chat face to face wherever you are. You can host virtual meetings and broadcast your conversation to the world. In fact, it is a video conference room hmm, which allows you to connect, collaborate, and share. And this is, in fact, um, a screenshot of a Hangout we had. Uh, you see at the bottom, my dear friends, well, this is uh, Maria Colusa on the, at the bottom on the left, and then Nina and Teresina Vance and myself. And you will see on the right, there is a chat window which allows us to um, well, do what we are doing right now, exchange ideas as uh, the presenter uh, pushes the slide. So it's a very nice um, environment. Um, this is the way a page looks, and my page, in fact. And um, you'll see the link to the Hangouts on the left. 
And uh, then you'll have uh, another option, which is starting a Hangout on Air. And here I stop to make a difference uh, between a normal uh, uh, plain Hangout and a Hangout on Air. And it's up to us to decide on which kind of Hangout we want to open. Um, any questions so far? Um, Judy, welcome. So glad you're here as well. So, Hello. Yes, Rita, I have a question. I'm sorry if I can uh, just use the mic. Uh, I posted in chat, uh, regarding circle count, uh, do you need to open your own account on that site, or you can somehow connect directly from Google Plus? How does actually this works? Um, it asks you whether you want to, or you are willing to provide your information through Google Plus, through Google. That is, as, some, as Vans was saying, they use the information and well, I hope this is okay. I just uh, didn't explore the, this tool too much to see whether it's safe or not. I guess it looked um, really safe, and uh, I just uh, you know used it and uh, integrated it into the PowerPoint today. But maybe Vance is really more cautious, and we should do some sort of exploration before we adapt adopt it. Um, okay, so I was saying that. It's important to, oh, you're very welcome, Mariana. Uh, it's, very in, it's very important to be able to know the difference between a plain uh, video hangout and a um, hangout on air. A uh, plain hangout is just a video call for up to 10 people who you can choose from your circles or make it public. I mean, you can also make your handout public, in which case we should be careful, I wrote, because anybody can come in and you never know. But if you include people from your circles, that will be a safe thing. And I see, I, I know that most of us will be doing that. Uh, this handout, the plain handout, is not connected to YouTube, it's not recorded, and it can also be made to be private. Whereas a handout on air, is recorded, can be made to come out, to go to YouTube video, can be shared with everybody. You can also make it all by yourself without making it public or putting up uh, or being, you know, on, on the YouTube video. Um, you can choose to send notifications in advance to invite people to join you. There is this chat option which is not shown in the video. Mm, there is a link provided to be shared with the people you want once you have recorded uh, the Hangout and it's already on the YouTube video. You can embed the, the whole Hangout because you get an embed code and you can watch yourself in the show. Any questions? I have a question about a new Google virtual room. I have posted a link here. Right. Ah, let me yes. see, let me see. It's a class virtual room, because in Russia, all are interested yes. in that. Maria is in a great company to get a training there, be a trainer. Can you say that again, please, the, 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 the latest that you said? The question is that I would like to know more about a new virtual room of Google, call it classroom. I posted the link here in chat box. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so uh, and one more. I would like it, uh, one advantage to hand out on air in any language in Uzbekistan, in Russia. It's very important to make uh, YouTube in Russia too. This administration people who speaks about digital competence, for example, that are not so fluent in English. Therefore, the moderator can really moderate linguistic competence and convert from Russian to Uzbek, from Uzbek to English, and it will be multilingual, multicultural YouTube. Uh, okay, so what is it that you're asking for? I mean, are you asking about yeah. your virtual room? When know that? that uh, Google has created a new virtual room, like Adobe Connect, like this, Illuminate. It will call it Classroom. 
Last ah, week. yes, I know, I know about that. Thank you very much. But this is something you have to join. You said the latest uh, um, thing that has come out of Google, that's Classroom. Yes, that's uh -huh. different. I'm not going to say anything about Classroom today because it has its own manage management system. It's different from yeah, all yeah, this. Yeah, it's a yeah I know. Cisco. Yes. Cisco Intel company together, yes. They have a grant here in Uzbekistan from Russia how to teach and train the people 50 plus only in, the, in classroom. Yes, I know, I know. It's a, manage, a management system altogether, uh -huh. so it's good to be explored on its own. And it has uh -huh. little to do with everything I'm saying today because it's a kind of more um, you know, um, more like a system which uh, you will join to get into an environment which already provides everything for your students, right? Yeah, maybe okay. next time we can discuss the advantages of this classroom then. Yeah, of course, why not? We can. Yeah, thank you very much thank you. For, for your remark. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Yes, Yeah, kind of. A kind of bulu made, um, uh, I mean, in an easier way for teachers to join in. It's a kind of model, not much easier. And, uh, of course, it's free. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so back to this, uh, you will see that we have these two choices, the hangout here and the plain hangout. And we can get to either by choosing the right icon. Now, if you choose to open a Hangout on Air, you'll have two options again. One, without a Google Plus event page, the other with a Google Plus event page, which you will be uh, able to fill in and send to the people you want to invite to your Hangout. Hmm? Uh, so this um, square um, shows you uh, the name of the Hangout on Air, which you have to write, the names and circles or email addresses of people you want to invite, and uh, um, the, you know, the note, well, this Hangout on Air will be broadcast on Google Plus by, and on your YouTube account, right? So people will get this, hmm? this um, event page invitation. And then, well, um, to, to open an event page, uh, you will need to start a hangout on air, of course, and uh, which says specifically with an event page. In which case, you will have to create a name and a description, choose a start, a start time, or that is now or later, and uh, uh, then uh, choose your audience. Who can see the Google Plus event page? You can make it public as well. You can add specific people. And if you don't want your Hangout on Air to be widely publicized, then you can make your event unlisted, unlisted, which is nice. Then click Share, and people can RSVP to your Hangout on Air through the event page so that you know how many people will be joining. Uh, you can also upload a video or an image uh, for your Hangout on Air. And if you don't have one, your users will see a countdown clock to the event. Then to add a custom video, you need to click on Add a Trailer and add the video. And, or select the video that you have already got in your PC. And then you can also add a custom image. And another good uh, option is collecting their questions before, I mean, uh, questions people might uh, put up for you to answer before or after the Hangout or during the Hangout. I'm turning on the Q&A application from the event page to gather questions from the audience. So when you start your Hangout, you can open this question and answer application to the list of questions asked. As you see, and as I said before, this is something we should all go through together, and this is my proposal. Once we get to know about just, um, you know, by theory about all these applications, um, I would like uh, once, and, uh, and we talked about this at the very beginning before we started the ha the, this um, uh, presentation, that we might organize a Hangout together just to see how it works and to take turns, um, you know, adding applications and see the, way, because see the way they work because this is learning through doing, right? Any questions? 
no questions. Maria? Uh, yeah, any questions? Ah. Okay. Am I talking? Yes, please. Yes, Very I'm, I'm talking on the on that other thing. Okay, um, I'm trying to get the microphone to work in the in the iPad, but having muted it, it doesn't work now. So yeah, uh, we have no um, no sessions uh, lined up for October, and if anybody wants to do anything on any Sunday in October, I think uh, it would be you could just grab one and we could have a hangout. So people are will are welcome to do that. Um, and uh, another thing I like about Hangout, this is really interesting, that when you start, you can start one right now and set it for, let's say, well actually in Mariana's case she was giving us a presentation uh, last week I believe. Uh, we set up a Hangout. Um, it was set to start last week, but she decided, we decided that she would, we would do the ITBI uh, closing ceremony instead, so we rescheduled the hangout. So now, if you go to that event, it says that the hangout is in 21 days. That's what it, it was. 21 days set forward. So uh, you get a an embedded YouTube video that, when you click on the play button, it says, "Come back in 21 hours." So you can. That's really nice because it tells people when the sessions start, and you can set it to go perpetually. Really. Um, I, I just love that feature, and of course, all it's all done in that one uh, embed. So that's your. It sets up, as you say, you can put a, a picture in there if you want. Uh, it sets up the um, uh, the event for you, and then when the event is on, it streams it for you. Uh, we haven't done it yet, Maria. It, it's actually rescheduled for two weeks from now. So if you go to the event that I set up. Uh, Last week, it will tell you that the um, event is not starting for um, yeah for another 14 days. So, in any event, uh, that becomes your stream during the session, so people can go and click on the play button and hear your live session, and then it becomes your recording once the hangout is over. So, I, I just love it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Vance. Yeah, very very nice feature. Any other question or suggestion or whatever? Yes, yes uh, I grabbed the mic at, as soon as uh, uh leave it. Uh, so Hangout on Air was is very useful for, uh, let's say, interviews with uh, educators. Yeah. Just a quick note for, um, during Reform Symposium 4, I was interviewed by a colleague from Brazil that was the last year and this year, Shelley has also done the, this out on air and talked to authors, um, have published many books, papers, uh, and so on. So it's very useful because, as you have said, John, you can go directly and just visit it. If you do, a, if I'm not uh, mistaken, you do a Google Plus Hangout on air and finish it. It automat automatically goes on YouTube, right? So um, it's the only bad thing is that you can have only 10 people, uh, but of course you can either uh, have it on the screencast if you are doing it uh, with just a few people and you can have others watch. Yes, a kind of a YouTube. webinar. Exactly, exactly. So it is fantastic. I really, I really enjoy it. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Mariana. Can I? Yes, 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 it is. Uh, my question is, uh, going back to, you don't have to go back to, but going back to your first slide on Google, uh, on Hangouts on Air, you talked about it being public or private, et cetera, and uh, what now Mariana just said that they go directly, automatically uh, to YouTube. My question is, can we avoid that they go directly to YouTube and uh, yes. um, let's yes. say we can we can upload it to YouTube just when we want. Yes, yes, we okay. can. Uh, yeah, it's not. I mean, it doesn't go there automatically. In fact, you need to do to um, 
do something before it goes. That is, check that you have your account connected to YouTube so that the system knows where to connect it to. You need to do that previous to the Hangout. Okay. But, I mean, the, the good thing about, if I, if I got this right, the good thing about a Hangout on Air is that it's recorded and a normal Hangout is not. Is that one of the differences? Exactly. That's the, the most important okay. difference. Yes. Right, right. Okay. And then I'm, and going so to show you, I'm going to show you something else. What it is that you can do to record your plain Hangout if you don't want to record it through YouTube because you don't want to open a Hangout on Air. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk Thanks. about that. Yes. Mm hmm. Thank you, okay. Felicia. I can. Can you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Can, okay. Good. I just went completely over to the iPad now. Okay. That's working. All right. So uh, if I can say something, there's hangout. There are hangouts which are not recorded, and there's hangout on air. Hangout on air <coughs> is uh, where you. It, it automatically goes to YouTube. It goes up to your account. I don't think there's any way you can prevent that unless you just set up a regular Hangout. You can set up a Hangout which will not be recorded on YouTube. But if you record it on YouTube, it goes to your account at YouTube and it streams while you're recording it. Now, what you could do is you could go uh, to your YouTube account and download the MP4 and then delete it from your account and then upload the MP4 later. So I suppose you could do it that way. But, uh, you can manage uh, any recordings in your YouTube account, uh, but they will go to the YouTube account and uh, be there uh, until you okay. manage it. Uh, well, let's find out. I'm not that sure. I'm not that sure. I need to find out. But I think you, you know, yeah. To start with, that is one of the differences, in fact, between uh, the plain Hangout, that is the possibility of you know having it recorded in YouTube automatically. But I think there is one step that you should follow before um, going uh, out on YouTube, which makes it which makes it uh, possible for you to be able to you know um, avoid having it on YouTube. I'm going to find out. I'm going to let you know in in detail about this. Okay. Can I just say one other thing? Since we have a limited number of mics open, uh, when you're not talking, please uh, free the talk button in case anybody else wants to use the mic. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. So back um, to this Hangout on Air. Um, once we start broadcasting, you need to go to your Hangout on Air event in your Google Plus event page, then click Start, invite your participants, click Start Broadcast to go live. And that's, that would be the list of steps. Um, now, once you start your Hangout on Air, you can also add more features and applications to your Hangout on Air. Like, uh, well, you, you will see uh, embedding a camera application, quest Q&A, control the room, um, applications which enhance your Hangouts, such as the ones I'm going to show you right now. I have put them all together. And uh, you will see on the left a list of applications with their icons. That is the chat application, which you can open to have the chat as the way we are doing today. Uh, the screen share, that is, you can do a screen share as well. The question and answer icon. The capture image icon, which allows you to do a screen capture. Uh, the cameraman, you'll see on the, le on the right. Um, that the cameraman allows you to decide whether the audio of your guests is on or off, or off, or broadcast the video in your audience and hide the other video feeds, etc. This has to do when with the cameraman. Um, I mean, that's your job as um, the the one, the audio, the leader of the group, and the camera leader as well. That so this has to do with well again volume and video. Uh, you can uh, uh, manage from your own um, hangout. And then there is this toolbox and some effects. And the effects are meant to make your hangout a little bit more fun, mainly when you are with students, I think. And we have already used, used this among ourselves to have some fun. Remember, Teddy, we did use this together. Um, this is another screenshot I took when we had a um, 
uh, hangout. Uh, and this has to do with the lower third, which is the possibility of writing a name so that people in the hangout uh, know who's talking. And we can even add something if you want, plus, I mean, ap apart from our names. And this will, uh, will be seen mirrored. But don't worry, we, the, the people who are presenting, will be seeing the mirror, the mirrored name, our name. But uh, people will see this right normally. Any questions so far? Uh, and then there. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, you'll get that, Mariana, through the uh, box, the toolbox. Hmm? That is here, the toolbox, lower third. Hmm? And this is quite a thing I would like to try with everybody willing to join me or join the group next time we meet in a Hangout. So the box will be found at uh, hangouttoolbox.com, and there you'll find the lower third, what it is, Comment tracker, what it is, a mean faces. It is all these, um, uh, you know, additional things that you can add so that your hangout becomes more fun. Now, imagine that you don't want a hangout on air. Teddy, this maybe comes in handy. Um, I mean, together with your question, imagine that you want to record your hangout, your plain hangout, your simple hangout. You want to record it without uh, having to go through all these uh, things, all these uh, YouTube things, for many reasons or whatever. If you choose a plain hangout, you can use any of these tools to record it. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with some of these, Camtasia, Cam Studio, screencast o -Matic. They are all great tools to record. Um, the one I usually use myself because I love it and I got so, I mean, dependent. I think, I think depend on Jing right now. I do everything using Jing. Are you familiar with Jing, I guess? Are you? Jing? Yes, Teresa, you are now. I love Jing. Yes, everybody does. And it's so, so user friendly. Um, Rosemary, you should try it. It's so user friendly, so easy to manage, and so nice. You can do so many things with Jing. Uh, there you'll find the tutorials. That is, uh, it's a TechSmith. It's um, the the company which has also produced Camtasia, and it's a very very useful tool to have handy. Jing, in fact, once you download it, will appear as a sun at the top of the screen. At this time, I'm going to ask you a question, by the way. Every now and then, I see that the sun is kind of sleepy, and it won't come out. And I need to click on it so as to wake, you know, wake him up. And the sun will come up when I click on, on, the, on it twice or three times. Does it happen to you? <laughs> Mariana, OK, yes. Does it ever happen um, to you that you need to click on the sun because it's kind of asleep? Um, <laughs> well, it happens to me quite often, but I love Jing anyway. So you can quickly capture. You, you don't know. OK, so it's my own sun, which is a little bit lazy, maybe Teresinha. <laughs> so uh, you can not only can you capture an image, which is what Mariana, you are doing right now. You can also capture video. And then you can either share it or save it. The only negative thing is that the video should be uh, no longer than, no, no, no uh, yeah, just five minutes long. And this is a disadvantage. And if you would like to have a longer video, Recorded, then you would need to download Camtasia, which I think by now is um, pricey. I mean, you should pay for it, it's not free. So you need to install Jing, you need to see a sun at the top of your screen, then you mouse over the sun and three little rays appear. You should try to select the area on your screen and click on capture to copy the image or a video. And then you can narrate your video in addition to capturing the action on the screen. Now, you will see that there are three rays, one to capture the image of the video. The other is a very good 
um, history uh, collection. That is a collection of all the latest captures that you have made. So if you have missed one or you want to go back, you have deleted one, you can go back to history and you'll find it there. You, you won't have to go back and recapture the image. Very nice uh, tool to adopt. Now, what can you do in a Hangout then is coming up. Live streaming, have live conversations, host interactive conversations with people around the world, schedule broadcasts and go live on Google+, YouTube, and your website if you choose the Hangout on air option, have your conversation recorded and saved on your YouTube channel. Remember, it should be your YouTube channel. And this uh, you should make clear before you start your Hangout on Air, uh, because you need to make the connection between um, Google Plus and, you, and your YouTube channel. And then you can take questions in advance to answer them uh, during the Hangout. Uh, then you can have these structures, uh, including the live applications. You can control when your participants are visible, adjust their audio and video, select who's on the big screen, and add custom banners and more. Now, this answers the question put up by one of you about the possibility of integrating any of Google documents into a Hangout, which is possible provided, of course, it's a Google document. You won't be able to put up a PowerPoint presentation because it's not a Google um, application. I mean, you need a, a, in any case, you would need a document which is saved in Drive, in documents, which is a, not a PowerPoint, but you know, a slide, as Google calls it. And so that you will be able to share with the people in your, in your audience if you want to. This is a great feature. Imagine you, I mean, your uh, possibility of sharing a document or uh, any kind of file that you want to share with the people that have joined you. Um, yes, you can do it as a screen share. And the whole world is on Facebook. Um, Michael, why would you like to take um, the mic, Michael? <laughs> well, Mike, come on, defend your Facebook, please. I would like to hear uh, what you have to say. Come on, have you got a mic? <laughs> I have a mic. <laughs> oh, oh, great to hear you, uh, Michael. <laughs> I look, I just, I think I'm just going to go to my grave concerned about the fact that the whole world thinks Facebook is the internet. And just recently, I had someone contact me, someone from my past, and they were wanting to have a very quite personal conversation. And I said, can we have this conversation in email, please? Because I, I don't feel comfortable having personal conversations in a place like Facebook, but that's my problem. But <laughs> look, Facebook's fantastic in, in many respects. I think my problem and maybe the problem that other people here share is that we were so busy doing so many things long before Facebook came along and now Facebook has usurped all those functions and so a lot of people, they just everything they do on the internet is, is via Facebook and I guess it's a case of if you can't beat them, join them and mostly I now join them but whenever I get the opportunity to complain, to complain about Facebook, I do. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I agree that it's a great way of uh, being social. Maybe I'm not that so social, so that's it. I mean, it has to do with taste. Unfortunately, we have choices, as you have said. Um, so, um, uh, back to, you know, all these um, things that we can do through Google Plus Hangouts, we can choose our audience, as I was saying, and as I said before, from uh, different circles, which makes it easy for us, or easy at least, to choose the people we want to have in our, in our Hangout. Uh, we can do this screen sharing as we um, have a Hangout. We can uh, use it as a virtual professional development tool with no travel costs, inviting people. And I'm going to show you different ways which came to my mind in which we can use uh, 
um, this um, hangout feature. And we can use you can use it for a flipped classroom instruction. I know that everybody knows about the this term, so I need not go through the concept of a flipped classroom, but for this uh, Google Plus Hangout is great. And then, of course, we can have all these public relationships through, uh, thanks to the possibility this option. Now, how can teachers use Google Plus? Well, this is a screenshot of a discussion I had with Google Certified Teachers as a member of a group. It's another member, another community I have joined, and which uh, is a very nice community made up of Google certified teachers all over, mostly the states. You know, Google is mostly um, quite spread, I mean, quite uh, well known uh, in the states. But anyhow, um, this discussion had to do with um, getting together with colleagues and saying and sharing how we used. Uh, the Hangouts. So it was a very interesting um, session in which we all shared and uh, decided how to use uh, this uh, tool in the best way. You can also promote collaboration, allow, allowing your students to uh, get together with other students in the world or with their own mates um, one day after school. Uh, you can be online with your students. Um, imagine those students who are absent or who are not uh, uh, really too good at, you know, maybe doing something in class and they need further assistance or help extra um, away from the class. Or you can review video with students in order to reteach difficult concepts. I like this um, possibility very much, um, you know, by recording a video which many students might find interesting or a need, in fact, uh, those students who need to uh, revisit the site or re-see instructions and, uh, or listen to them again. So this is hand handy and useful for that as well. You can share a YouTube video. And um, uh, in this case, uh, it's a TED video which has been shared. and. You can watch it together with other people. You can bring in experts. Imagine um, within your classroom, I'm sure there is always someone who is good at doing something, and or else um, friends of uh, friends or friends of your students who are good at doing something else, then they will be really uh, excited at being able to share their abilities with uh, more students or more kids. Uh, for conversation classes, right, Maria, that's a good idea as well. You can invite guest speakers and uh, join a group of colleagues and listen to these speakers, maybe willing to share their experiences. You can add this for homework or tutoring. Mm -hmm. You can share student performances. Imagine students who perform maybe at school in the classroom and whose parents are not able to watch them live because they are working. So you just uh, record them and put up the video so that parents can watch the video. You can connect with parents, mainly those parents who are unable to go to school to meet you and speak about their kids. I like this one, encouraging debates through photos or images that you can put up and uh, allowing students to say what they feel about the photograph live. Or connect with other classrooms all over the world for us. Okay, um, okay, okay, Rosemary. Thank you very much for being here. Bye. And in case in the case of uh, um, Maria Colusa, for example, or Mariana, or many other people who live like me in countries where English is not spoken on the streets, it's important that students get together with other native speakers or non-native speakers of English with whom to share and uh, which uh, will give them the idea of how valuable it is the English that they have been learning. So this is a very nice option I generally try to use. You can even let students share their trips. They are very fond of telling what they have done so they can put up their photographs and share their trips. You can let them share their talents one by one if they are good at playing football or something or playing an instrument. They can do experiments and compare results. And this is an image of uh, an experiment uh, that students in the States 
were showing. And uh, it was a Google Science Fair uh, hangout. I am there at the bottom of the page. And these students were showing what they had produced. And look at the face of this boy. How uh, poor. He, he looks really ecstatic. He, 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 he was really feeling so happy at being able to share what he had done, this kind of uh, vehicle that he had invented. And then you can have fun, and uh, as it says in typical Google's time, allow funny add-ons to video, which adds, you know, these um, giggles and uh, fun to your session. So you can add effects, you know, the control room, you can make it a good way of uh, adding something to your, or for your professional development. And you can get together to know what other people are doing through meetings in, that is, um, having these uh, meetings with other teachers you know, for professional development, like this one, which I joined. And it was about flipping your classroom. And so you can get to know and learn a lot about what other people are doing and what other people are um, you know, thinking of. Uh, um, or how they can uh, use uh, the tool in different ways. And uh, well, this is the, the invite that I showed, I'm showing you, the invite which is sent to uh, people you want to join you. Remember the invites that I talked about when I spoke about um, uh, Google, uh, the Hangouts on air. Now, how teachers can use Hangouts? Well, to broadcast and archive live sessions, to share screens, to work collaboratively, to create live shows and talks for broadcasts, to create two-way conversations in a digital format and develop, develop rich online portfolios for their kids, and for professional development. Now, what activities can you think of um, to integrate Google Plus Hangouts? Any, any questions, any suggestions, any ideas? Interviews, sharing culture, yes, right. Cultural classes, I love that best, really. Yes, Maria, please, go ahead. Yes, Maria, the floor is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Very well. Uh, well, uh, I remember that last year at FAPI, um, our friend Vance set up a Hangout. Uh, we tried to uh, stream live my session from FAPI. Uh, he was the one who set everything up. I didn't know how to do that at the time. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't enough of Wi-Fi. The broadband wasn't very good. And so I, uh, it was quite short. It was just the beginning. But uh, at one point, there were more people on the Hangout that in the room. And that was quite <laughs> quite funny, you know. <laughs> and oh, another yeah. Thing we <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I had, friend, for example, a friend from Russia who joined us, and, and another one from, from France. Uh, Elizabeth uh, was there. Uh, you you know her. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, uh, another thing that I do is I use it, other people's recording for my conversation classes. For instance, uh, uh, someone you showed in one of your slides, his name is Steve Sherman. He regularly interviews interesting people on uh, on. Google Hangouts, and he posts the links for everyone to join. And uh, he once I interviewed a uh, war correspondent. Um, her name, um, well, I'm going to post uh, the name here in the chat. Uh, and I used that uh, for conversation classes. Uh, and it, it was great because, uh, well, it was uh, authentic material, and it was up to date. It was, uh, it's just fantastic. The, the yeah, possibilities then are and great. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. That was what I, went, Thank I wanted you. to say. Thank you, Maria. Yeah. Thank you very much because you know it's so interesting to see uh, how other people are using this or can use this, and uh, so really so, such a rich experience that we can share. So um, 
This is the other perk provided by Google Plus. That is the possibility of our joining different kinds of communities having to do with our own uh, you know, interests. Uh, so if you maybe um, search for educational communities, uh, you'll get the chance to join any of them. And um, you will see that all your communities will come up. Of course, what has in action is there. Then you can discover different communities and try them and see the, which one you prefer to join. You can even create your own community. Whereas the system will also provide you with a possible a community uh, you can join. Uh, so Google Plus communities can be public or private and um, with different topics and interests. There are different uh, categories to find conversations. Uh, you can start hangouts and plan events with community members and share with your community um, from any plus one button across the web. And with Google Plus communities, you can bring fans together by creating your own community, listen and learn from your fans, keep up with community discussions, and get more followers, definitely. Thank you very much for being here. It's been great to share experiences, and I love this about this, uh, you know, getting together, um, listening to what other people are doing and what they think about different uh, applications that we integrate in our, in our platform. Thank you very much, Vance and everybody else. Yeah, thank you very much, Rita. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. We're good on the iPad. Um, so, um, yeah, that's uh, trying to think of things you can do with Google Plus or with Google Hangouts is um, it's it's one of these tools that you know once you become familiar with it, it, it becomes it's very easy to use, and um, you know you can just do whatever you want with it. It just lends itself to so many different collaboration and like you said, you know, just whatever whatever comes to mind is uh, possibly uh, enabled by Google Plus. So by Hangouts and Google and many other uh, the, the Google communities are quite interesting. You know, comparing Google and Facebook, uh, when I make announcements, I announce uh, learning together events in our Google communities and also in our Facebook groups. But I've noticed that the traction seems to come from the Google groups. That is a good response. People, whereas in Facebook groups, rarely do people really respond. I'm not sure why that is. Um, and Michael commented that there were a lot of people who seem to live in Facebook. Which that's quite true, I'm sure, for some people. But uh, most of us, I suppose, here tend to live in many different spaces, and uh, you know, just use the ones that, that we notice as we use them. Which ones have the affordances that we're interested in at any particular time? So when I say I like Facebook, it's for communicating with people in certain ways. Um, I see a lot of cat videos, for example. Uh, in Google communities, that never happens. Uh, it's always, in my case, professional. Uh, but it, and there's so many things to learn from Google communities. They're always posting really interesting things. I suppose, of course, it here again, depends on who's in your community. So um, that's my impression. Yeah, thank you very much, Vance. Very timely, very nice. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Um, so. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, uh, Mariana. Mariana, I just wanted a few things. Uh, Maria was talking about broadband and low connections. Well, this is something I faced when I uh, we when we had a slower internet connection, and I couldn't use a video and microphone at the same time. So I would probably uh, stop video sharing and just talk, uh, or vice versa. So, but now we have better connections, and I can even do easily screen sharing. Uh, so I don't know if this is just because of Google Plus Hangouts. Maybe it takes more uh, internet connections, because yeah. it was no problem in, in other uh, applications. OK, yeah. so just to say. And I think there is a 
colleague, uh, Sebastian, in the uh, chat, and I think he would like to share a few things. Okay, I'm uh, give the mic. Thank you very much, Mariana. Uh, thank you, Maria. I am in Kerala, India. When I teach, I taught some students about Google Hangout. They wanted a practical application for that as well. So that week, the son of a friend of mine was getting married. So my students arranged a Google Hangout for the friends of the bride and bridegroom to participate online the whole marriage ceremony. The students broadcast it live online. Of course, my students learn in connected classrooms, but this was the, my experience when the students broadcast it. It is a Google Hangout but they call it Hangouts on Air. That's all about my experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Thank you very much for your remark. And uh, by uh, Mariana, thank you very much for turning up and joining us and sharing your own experience. And um, well, um, I think we could be calling it uh, a session, um, um, unless you have uh, something else to add or suggest or um, well, whatever. I have one more comment on the uh, what the, the Sebastian just described. Is that his name, Sebastian? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, thank you for checking in from Kerala, by the way. Um, I had a similar experience. Um, I when I got my job in Al Ain, I was living in Abu Dhabi, which is 150 kilometers an hour and a half or so. And um, so I would commute every day. And uh, early in this uh, experience, my colleagues uh, had a party. And they, the party was in Al Ain, and I was in Abu Dhabi. And so everyone was there and invited. So uh, they set up a hangout so that I could come to the party. <laughs> and uh, it, the the computer was kind of in the middle of the room, and people just stopped by and chatted. It was almost like being there. Um, and also, I could, you know, I didn't have to dress for it or anything like that. Uh, it was very comfortable. Uh, we could put on our party hats, of course, and things like that. So, yeah, that's that's what I meant when you, you have this tool and you can use it in almost any way. You know, so you, things will come up, and you'll just say, oh yeah, well, let's just go to hang out for that. And, yeah. You know, and your colleagues True. get familiar with it as well. They, can, you know, you can go from classroom to classroom. And yeah. So many things you can do. So many it things. Works, exactly. It also works on the iPad, by the way. There's an iPad app for it, and once you get it on a tablet or a mobile device, then you can carry it around with you. And that here again expands the possibilities just uh, incredibly. I'm sure Michael could possibly speak to that. Um, but you know, you can have people in different. You can have people out of doors doing one thing or um, you know, showing what they're doing in the field, and uh, other people can be in a classroom or in a, in a different situation and be experiencing that. Yeah, yeah, true ones. Uh, to me, this is one of the most uh, um, valuable tools that we can adopt. Uh, I mean, as teachers and as just uh, users, because as you have said, you can enjoy being anywhere and joining anywhere and sharing anything with anybody. So it's great, a great tool, really. Okay, very comprehensive. That's true, Teresa. Very comprehensive. Yes. Well, well thank you very much, Rita, for taking your time, and uh, you're, you're giving this presentation at a different event. You were just. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to give it, uh, I think it is two or three weeks from now, to um, an audience made up of teachers in Argentina. You know that I lead this group, this group of teachers, and I'm training them to become, um, you know, um, prospective users of the internet and integrators of, uh, uh, I mean, I, the, the thing we do and the thing we have learned our, our way, so they are doing that little by little. 
and uh, I think they enjoy it. I hope so. Yeah, um, for sure. You're a great trainer, and uh, and we learn so much from each other. Um, you, you don't really know how much you know, you know, until you meet colleagues who don't know these things that you take for granted, and then especially if they're receptive, then you find you have so much that you've learned through this community that you can share. Uh, I have some experiences like that myself. I think I'm going to be talking at the blog festival September 21st, sort of giving the talk on uh, some of the things I've done with Wiki that suddenly got noticed by some of my colleagues and given me the opportunity to train people in, in my context. So I'll, I'll leave that till then. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's hard to appreciate what we learn from one another through taking the time to meet online you know, once a week or however often you, you appear. And um, it's just this, this uh, learning just kind of falls on you and uh, sifts through you. And you don't even know how much you know until you meet people who can benefit from this knowledge. So we certainly appreciate your sharing what you've learned. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Val. Thank you for always being there, supporting us, and you know, being the cat herder, the perfect cat herder, uh, who has you know managed to come up with such a wonderful community of educators worldwide, and who has been, in fact, the the motor, the engine of this uh, community for so long. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Um, I'm, I don't know if I can take credit for being the engine. I think you, everyone in the community is the engine. I'm not sure. What, like you said, I'm a cat herder. I'm sort of the, uh, the <laughs> conscience of the group or whatever. But anyway, it's everybody in the group that makes it what it is. But thank you very much for being a part of it and contributing. And uh, this session is being recorded. Uh, it, the recording gets put online once everyone leaves the room. So I'm going to remain here since I don't have to get my car. I'm going to remain here until people do that. So we'll leave the recording on until things go silent. Okay. Bye-bye, um, everybody, yeah. and thank you all. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Uh, you don't have a microphone, or do you have a microphone? Uh, I have a microphone. I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me stop the recording. Hang on a second. <laughs>